our 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 final topic this might this might be a little little longer uh of, of a of a topic because i know we kind of went through those those two pretty darn quick um this is this is a hedges article from from sheer post that i have saved for uh a, a, a little bit i gotta find the paragraph that uh i want to start with Ba-ba, there it is cool so this, like I said, this is a Hedges article. It's deceptively titled, Don't Be Fooled by Joe Biden. So you kind of think like it's going to be a Joe Biden article, but it, it, it is very much not a Joe Biden article. It is it is an article about uh, about sadism in American culture. So it's it's a well written article because it's chris hedges like i i don't i think i think chris hedges you know he would have to like i don't know fall down the stairs and hit his head and be wonky and be like i'm gonna type this article and then it's like oh no what happened to chris oh yeah he fell down the stairs i think that's the point where you can be like yeah it's not a great chris hedges article but usually his stuff is spot on even when i disagree with him about something like the argument he makes still makes sense uh, so I can respect that. So I'm going to read a couple of different portions of it. Uh, like I said, it's a pretty lengthy article, and I would encourage you guys to go, to go check it out at, uh, at sheerpost.com, S-C-H-E-E-R, post.com, and a Lee Camp post there as well. So a uh, lot, lot, of, lot of great people contribute to the site. So we're going to start on this paragraph here. Uh, sadism now defines nearly every cultural, social, and political experience in the United States. Uh, it is expressed in the greed of an oligarchical elite that has seen its wealth increase during the pandemic by $1.1 trillion while the country has suffered the sharpest rise in, po in, in, in its poverty rate in more than 50 years. It is expressed in extrajudicial killings by the police in cities such as Minneapolis. It is expressed in our complicity in Israel's wholesale killing of unarmed Palestinians, the humanitarian crisis endangered by the war in Yemen, and our reigns of terror in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria. It is expressed in the torture in our prisons and black sites. It is expressed in the separation of children from their undocumented parents, uh, where they are held as if they were dogs in a kennel. So, actually, there's there's a little bit more I want to read uh, from that, too. I, I do want to read this next paragraph. Uh, the historian John Huizinga, writing about the twilight of the Middle Ages, argued that as things fall apart, sadism is embraced as a way to cope with the hostility of an indifferent universe. No longer bound to a common purpose, a ruptured society retreats into the cult of self. It celebrates as do corporations on Wall Street or mass culture through the rea uh, through reality TV shows, the classic traits of psychopaths, superficial charm, grandiosity and self-importance, a need for constant stimulation, a penchant for lying, deception, manipulation and the incapacity for remorse or guilt. Get what you can as fast as you can before someone else gets it. This is the, this this is the state of nature, the war of all against all. Thomas Hobbes saw a consequence of social collapse, a world in which life becomes, quote, solitary, nat poor, nasty, brutish, and short. And this sadism, as Friedrich Nietzsche understood, fuels a perverted, sadistic pleasure. Just in two paragraphs, there's 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 a uh, a lot to take in, right? So a lot of this, what he's saying is, you know, sadism... Say this. There, there's a pretend kindness that comes out of it, right? Because uh, it, it is it is sort of the tr triggering into the the mindset of psychopaths, and and usually psychopaths and sociopaths will pretend to have emotions, right? They pretend that they care about things. Um, so, so a sadist, so something like a, a, a sadist within capitalism would say, like, well, I don't want to evict people from their homes, but what choice do I have? Yet literally anything else but evicting people from their homes. Like, you know the state of things out there, right? Literally anything else would be better than evicting people out of their homes during or not during a pandemic. Like, at no point should somebody be rendered homeless. But 
that's about the individual. That would have to be a total shift in our societal paradigm. Like the way we live our lives would completely have to change in order for phrases like that to not be accepted within capitalism, right? And that is a sadistic thing. It's, it's a sadistic phrase because it shows that you that you want to care, but really you don't. You're pretending and it kind of makes it worse. If if we had if we had a different society that didn't put so much emphasis on individualism and the self, um, we would have a culture where if somebody in your building or your neighborhood was going through a rough time, instead of being like, well, I got to think about my bottom line, we go, well, you know, I have enough to keep me in this apartment, but this individual doesn't. I'm going to give them a little bit. Let's let's rally and organize, you know? Let's let's help this person out. Let's help this person get through the next month. But that's not that's not what the sadistic philosophy of hyper individual uh, hyper individualism preaches. It preaches that you take care of yourself and only yourself and others come later. Once you're done with your once you're done with you, you then yay, yeah, 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 go go take care of the others. Phrases like, um, hey, if the, you know, on an airplane, if the cabin loses pressure, make sure you put the oxygen mask on you instead of your dumb little baby. Don't put it on that stupid baby first. That baby and its dumb little lungs, don't put, don't do that. Yeah, don't help the thing that can't help itself. You know, that child that you have a, an, a, 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 a unwavering, fucking emotional attachment to don't help it put that mask on you first when you start breathing <gasps> ah, then go oh this dumb little baby needs help because its stupid lungs are too small to understand how oxygen is supposed to work like that's the mentality of sadism Get what you can after you've already taken what you want. That's how that operates. That's the philosophy of this country. And it's sadistic. So I want to read the, the next part of this. I'm going to jump around just a, a wee bit in the article here. Not like out of context or anything, but it'll. It, I think it'll all make sense. Or at least it did when, when I was putting this shit together. So hopefully it still makes sense. Uh, but that just goes on to say, sadistic societies condemn segments of the population. In America, these are poor blacks, Muslims, the undocumented, the LGBTQ community, radical anti-capitalists, intellectual, intellectuals as human refuse. They are viewed as social contaminants. Laws, institutions, and bureaucratic structures are built in sadistic societies that function, in the words of Max Weber, as an inanimate machine. The machine forces most people into the masses, but allows some willing to do its dirty work to rise above the multitude. Those that carry out the sadism on behalf of the power elite fear being pushed back into the mass. For this reason, they energetically carry out the degradation, cruelty, and sadism the machine demands. The more they insult, persecute, torture, humiliate, and kill, the more they they seem to magically widen the divide between themselves and their victim. This is why black police and correction officers can be as cruel and sometimes crueler than their white counterparts. And he makes a very good argument in this. You know, I've I've seen uh, th this meme kind of go around several different times of, uh, you know, uh, hey, you're a black person. Why are you a police officer? Uh, and, and the black cop responds to something to the effect of uh, you have to be the example you want to set in the world or something like that. Right. Like be the change you want to see in the world or something like that. And that's a nice message. It really is. What a nice message to send to kids and all that shit. Uh, except it that ignores the systemic problems, right? The systemic problems that Hedges describes here is what is rewarded in a sadistic society. Because a society that values intellectuals, the society that values compassion and kindness and community and camaraderie and solidarity would not have a lot of the problems that we have today. It just wouldn't. 
a lot of crime is committed because of poverty. A lot of crime is committed because of a uh, 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 trauma created by capitalism. That's what addiction is as well. It's 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 compounding trauma from capitalism. But you wouldn't have that. So so in order to rise to the ranks, you have to be cruel. You have to be competitive. You have to make sure that that's why that's why it's like like people that go, well, I have work friends. It's like, really, how far does that fucking friendship go? If if you were offered a promotion, but in order to do that, you had to crush your work friend. Our society encourages that so much that without a second thought, probably 80% of people would fucking do it. I hated that shit. I fucking hated that shit. That's why I didn't want to work in corporate America anymore. I still don't. I still don't want to be a part of corporate America because it's, it is it is literally like for, like it forces people to become the worst versions of themselves and then you get rewarded for it. So then psychologically, like you think that's the way you need to operate and it completely fucks you up. Again, you know, two days ago, I talked about that, that inadequacy and self-hatred, that loop that it sends into it's a, it sends you into. That's how this this society operates. And, and that's why it's a sadistic society. Uh, let me find this next paragraph here. Aha, there it is. Okay. Uh, it says, Jean Emery, who was, a, who was in the Belgian resistance in World War II, VH1's best war, World War II, if you guys... It's the best war, according to VH1, uh, and who was captured and tortured by the Gestapo in 1943, defined sadism as the radical negation of the other, the simultaneous denial of both the pr social principle and the reality principle. In the sadist world, torture, destruction, and death are triumphant, and such a world clearly has no hope of survival. On the contrary, he desires to transcend the world to achieve total sovereignty negating uh, by negating fellow humans which he sees representing a particular kind of quote hell emery's point is important a sadistic society is all about collective self-destruction it is the apostasis which i do want to i do want to like look this word up I, I looked it up before but i'm gonna do it anyway uh it's a, the highest point of development a culmination or climax I did not know what that meant, so I wanted to share that with everybody. That means culmination. Uh, it is the ap ap apothesis of a society deformed by overwhelming experience of loss, alienation, and stasis. The only way to affirm yourself in failed society is to destroy. Uh, Johan Huizinga, in his book Warning of the Middle Ages, noted that the dissolution of medieval society provoked violent tenor of life. Today, this violent tenor of life drives people to carry out police murders, eviction of families, court order bankruptcies, the denial of uh, medical care to the sick, suicide bombings, mass shootings, and the call. And sociologist Emil Durkheim understood those who seek the annihilation of others are driven by desires for self annihilation. Sadism imparts the rush and pleasure, often with heavy sexual overtones, which lures us towards what Sigmund Freud called the death instinct. The instinct to destroy all life forms, including our own. When enveloped by a death-saturated world, death, ironically, is embraced as the cure. So, again, two paragraphs, lot to, uh, lot to unpack, right? So, uh, some of the stuff is he's talking about how sadism is a is a reflection of self hatred. It, it's it's the it's the externalization of self hatred. So hyper individualism goes against. I think it goes against human nature, right? What America preaches, and and I shouldn't just say America. What capitalism preaches is this dedication to the self. Like you'll do anything that you can to get the most amount of wealth, the infinite amount of wealth in a finite planet. You'll do whatever it fucking takes, right? That's that's what capitalism preaches us to do. That's what capitalism says is the right thing to do. But we're primates. We're social creatures. We were uh, primates live and work in collective troops. That's how they operate, right? You you never just see a lone fucking monkey out there. It, and if you did, it's because it's in a fucking Disney cartoon and they lied to you because Disney is a bunch of fucking capitalists anyway. 
So they throw little propaganda bits into the fucking cartoons. But but they're they work in a troop. They can't survive on their own. Not, and neither can we, right? Like that's it, it, it's very like if we are in long periods of isolation, it's not good for us. This hyper individualism of just me, 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 me is not good for us. It cycles into self hatred. That self hatred externalizes, and then you you sadistically go out to destroy people's lives. The example earlier of like. Uh, how you would very much throw your work friend under the bus if that meant that you got a promotion, if that meant you got a raise. If this is if this is not the the way we are actually meant to operate. And it, and this is the kind of isolation that's preached by the rich. Excuse me, my sinuses are going insane because of the constant shift in the temperatures. Um, but they but they preach this isolation, right? They want the working class to be isolated from each other. Look at what Amazon did in in Bessemer, Alabama. They changed the traffic lights. I mean, and the city complied with them. They they weren't letting people like they, they, well, the union didn't even fucking show up to, to actually rally around. But they kept people apart. Nobody was able to talk about the unions. Nobody was able to talk about their collective strength, and that's what they want. Because to the rich, they're already good. They already got it all. They, they're getting their infinite resources on in a finite planet. And they hate themselves so much that now they're externalizing that hatred in the workplace by making it an intolerable place to work. But if you're desperate, you'll go work there. Um, I, I I think, don't quote, don't quote me on this. This might have been Lee Camp and Graham Elwood talking on government secrets about how you know, people are going to work for Amazon because, you know, the, a lot of the other jobs don't pay as well. Like Amazon would fucking pay them 18, 20 bucks, but then you basically have to be under the iron will of fucking Jeff Bezos and his weird pee fetishes where he gets off on torturing the working class. And the reason why he gets off on that is because he has given in to this, the, the American sadism. He has given into it. He probably had to do some fucked up shady shit, lost friends along the way. And he probably hates himself for it on the inside. But in a society like this, you're not allowed to have those kind of feelings. Fuck your feelings. So it gets externalized into a different direction, which is how he treats his working class. Just how he treats the employees. And doesn't let them realize their collective strength. But all that's changing because we do realize their collective strength. Right? Because that collective strength and that cooperation topples any sort of sadistic society. It flips the narrative. There's a reduction of trauma. There's less self-hatred involved. And which leads us uh, cause, cause I'm, I'm that good. It leads us to the last part, the la very last paragraph that Hedges writes in the article. Uh, it says it is not until people are reintegrated into the society, not until corporate and oligarchical control over our education, political and media systems are removed, not until we recover the, uh, ethic of common good that we have any hope of rebuilding the positive social bonds that foster a healthy society. History has amply illustrated how this process works. Excuse me. Uh, it is the game of fear. Until we make them afraid, until a terrified Joe Biden and the oligarchs he serves looks out on a sea of pitchforks, we will not blunt the culture of sadism that they have engineered. So again, it's all about that collective effort. This is what the labor movement was talking about. Right here, what Hedges just said. That's what the labor movement's been talking about. That's what the, that's what the early 1900s were all about. They were trying to empower the working class so they realized that they're not alone. They don't have to be alone. They have strength in numbers, and and we can reach equality if we if we push back against the people that say no, an uneven society is 
what needs to what, what you know what what needs to be at play what what is working for for america for, for the rest of the world i used to have this argument with my ex-wife all the time about hierarchies and shit and you know to me it was just like it, it, it really depends on the situation whether we need that hierarchy or not but i believe everybody is important uh everybody serves a if if we have jobs where everybody is serving a particular purpose and achieving a, a try in, in, in an attempt to achieve a common goal then we don't need hierarchy we're all kind of treated as equals based on our differences which which again works under the principles of socialism the principles of the labor movement Biden has no interest in any sort of real fundamental change. He said that. That was something that he said. Biden is the representation of American sadism. This is the reason why a lot of us were like more concerned about Joe Biden than we were about Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a narcissistic piece of shit. But he is not the architect of 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 the sadistic policies that we've seen in america in the last 40 50 years joe biden is that architect he grew out of the middle class he grew up in a very middle class home he talks about it he's very proud of it but he fucking hates it and that self-hatred gets externalized into his politics into the way that he legislates and into the way that he leads. He might put out some nice speeches out there, or recognize a genocide here or there. But let's be honest, those are speechwriters for him. The speechwriters might believe in what they write in Biden's speeches. But does Joe Biden legitimately believe? I don't think so. I agree with Placone. I agree with Ron Placone in saying that the best we can get out of Biden is that he might be an LBJ, where if we keep the pressure on him, he'll kind of cave and uh, and pass a couple of minor progressive policies here and there. I don't, I don't know if we would get something like a Medicare for All, but, you know, we might get a couple. We might get little things here and there. But he hates the middle class. He grew up middle class. He knows what that's like. He got out of it. He got into politics. He made a bunch of money. You know, there was an article where, you know, him and Jill Biden together, I think, make like a million dollars. I think Kamala Harris and her husband make a little bit more than the president, which is kind of weird. Uh, again, within the structure of capitalism, right? Like the hierarchy, you would figure that the president makes more money than the president's, or I, rather the president's family makes more money than the vice president's family, but uh, that apparently is not the case. So, which again, under the paradigms of capitalism, that ain't how it's supposed to work, right? But he hates the middle class. He doesn't want to be a part of the middle class. He doesn't want to see more middle class. So everything he's done is about getting rid of anything to help the middle class he comes from that he comes from that stock of people that i just don't understand he comes from the stock of people where he's like i went through all of these struggles and now i'm going to make i'm going to manufacture it so that everybody goes through that struggle pick yourself up by your bootstraps me on the other hand I go through a particular struggle and I'm like, fuck this. Nobody should have to go through it. And if I know somebody is, I'm going to do something to help them out. So they don't have to fucking go through it. But that's just me. I'm a commie, pinko, Russian, Putin, socialist, Russia, Russia, Russia. And you can see this, this hatred, this self-hatred externalized in the way that he legislates. No Medicare for all won't defund the police, won't increase the minimum wage, no corporate tax hikes, no humanitarian efforts, no ending of the wars. We're thinking about a ceasefire in Palestine. Thinking about it? The fuck are you talking about? Your buddy Netanyahu wants to commit an extermination 
And you're like, we'll think about stopping it. If we stay silent, if we don't march, if we don't organize, if we don't amplify, if we don't start speaking out against this shit, then we will fall into a, a, a sadistic society that we might not be able to come out of. The, the hope I have is seeing things like the McDonald's strike, right? Is seeing things like the Black Lives Matter movement. And the amount and, and the and the, the Palestinian general strike, the marches in solidarity of Palestine, the fact that we might start seeing an anti-war movement come back because a lot more people are accepting socialism and socialists are pretty fucking anti-war. If we don't speak out and organize and march and get back out on the streets, then this neoliberal statism that Biden's always wanted will come true. He, he. I mean, on, honestly, like the way they talk about the workers, uh, nobody wants to work anymore, is just him trying to cut Social Security, which is he's tried five fucking times to do that. And now, thanks to the propaganda machine, he might he he might be able to convince enough people in Congress with 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 a you know Joe Manchin patting him on the ass, giving him the old thumbs up. I'll vote for destroying Social Security. Not if we speak out against it. What Joe Biden wants is a gruff, tough police state with little or no social programs, more wars, more military bases to control the world under U.S. imperialism. That's what he wants. That's that's the level of sadism that he's willing to get. And that's the level of sadism that that capitalism uh, will get to. Oh, my God. But. Again, the fact that we're talking about it, the fact that we're seeing strikes, the fact that we're seeing marches, or the fact that people are organizing, the fact that we're 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 talking about getting, uh, you know, the the largest corporation that has been deregulated, unionized, the, the employees of of Amazon unionized, huge, to push back against the American statism. Let's look at your comments. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -oh. Ba -ba -ba -ba. oh, man. <laughs> Biden is sadistic. Holly says Biden is sadistic. Indeed, he is. Indeed, he is. CG says, uh, particularly if you're being paid well uh, to not care. Yeah, but, uh, you know, there's a there's a lot of psychological studies that have been done that if you if you gain a certain amount of wealth, like monetary wealth, you lose touch with your humanity because you've you have you, you no longer are struggling the same way that everybody else is. Right. Like we've manufactured this struggle. Um. Uh, Holly, uh, Reagan, ho ho homeless choose to be homeless. A, s a small percentage do. And they use that small percentage to, you know, ignore evictions and ignore the fact that minimum wage has been stagnant and people can't afford food and rent at the same time. Yeah, uh, as you point out, it's the and 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 Ayn Rand, uh, Ayn Rand world. Uh, get get what you're after. Uh, uh, get what you want after you've already taken what you want. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that. I came up with that. I was like, that's a nice piece of poetry. <laughs> Miguel says, uh, so the pandemic was pretty convenient to separate people. It, you know, it was. Uh, I think a lot of things under capitalism is um, is opportunistic. And I think they kind of saw this opportunity as like, okay, we can separate people and then get whatever the fuck we want. But again, that tactic only works without the internet, which is why I'm surprised that like Comcast and Verizon and all of those assholes didn't try to like jack up the price of the internet and, and force people to use it less and stuff. You know, as, as CG points out, it's divide and conquer. Uh, it's their blueprint to keep us desperate and wanting for basic essentials while pitting us against one another. You're conditioned to hurl your coworker under a bus. Yeah, it, absolutely. That is that is exactly what it is. We we, they, we are conditioned to do that sort of stuff. 
we're encouraged to do that kind of stuff uh, because you are you are fighting for basic needs. Basic needs are not given to you. You have to earn your basic needs. That's how that's how capitalism works. Right. You have to earn those basic needs. That's that's just how it works. You don't get basic needs, even though they're called basic needs for a fucking reason. You, you have to you have to fight for it. Right. It's it's the uh, it, it's it's that old proverbial uh the 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 roman king watching the peasants fight in the uh, the colosseum uh <laughs> dinner with franklin good to see you uh and they point out that the, uh, uh, and then they point to that system and claim it's just natural social organization yeah they do they they do say it's natural social organization but you never see this anywhere else in the animal kingdom I, except with scavengers maybe Wolves don't operate that. I mean, wolves make sure that people, all, all, everybody gets to eat. They work together so that everybody gets a little piece of the 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 food and stuff. A single screw can mess up a whole machine. Yeah, and we need to be that single screw that fucks up this machine. <laughs> Holly says, uh, uh, "An injury to one is an injury to all." <laughs> CG is ranting out loud to herself. Yes. Uh, but as uh, as as Dinner with Franklin points out, you are not alone. I too am ranting in, in my in my room right now. <laughs> uh, Dinner with Franklin says, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Ironically, was invented to express the impossibility of something. Uh, I, I think that's ironic in a way. Oh, was it really? I did not know that. I actually never I actually never knew the origins of that phrase, which is which is funny because usually I do look up the origins of, of phrases like that. So, yeah, I didn't uh, I didn't know that. Thank you for thank you for pointing that out. That is that is pretty ironic. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people-powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.